Well, good morning, church. How is it with your souls today? Good, good. Just a few quick announcements. I've been going over these for the past couple of weeks, but so I'm just going to touch on them. Uh, next Sunday, Dwell Orphan Care will be here from 3 to 6 o'clock. Um, if you would like more information on that, please call the office. Um, Sally will be getting a, be beginning a new Bible study on October 6th. That's Wednesdays uh, at 1 o'clock. If you want more information, call Sally. Good and Plenty Meals starting on October 6th as well. So if you have any questions about that or you would like to volunteer to help, call Betsy. And the home communion team is looking for more volunteers to, to go out and bring the blessing of the bread and cup to those who can't get out. And if you're interested in that, please call Betty Jo Suey. My friends, let us begin worship in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the day that you have provided us. Lord, we come in your name to lift our voices in praise. Lord, we come to hear your word and affirm it. And we come to lift up our prayers to you. Lord, may this day be a blessing for us who have come, that, that we may smile at one another as we, we lift up our voices, that we may, may smile with one another as we, we greet each other. And Lord, that we may smile at one another knowing that the prayers we lift to you are heard. Lord, as we gather here today, may your spirit bless us with your presence, and may we be strengthened for the days ahead. Amen. Amen. Let us read together our, um, <laughs> sorry. Let us read together our vision statement, which you can find on the screen. We are a welcoming family of Christ followers, living lives of generosity as we seek to be a blessing to others. And our Apostles' Creed, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, was under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. During this time, we ask you to think for a little bit and invite you to send your tithes and offerings so that we can continue to meet the needs of our church and of the community.
and let us pray together the prayer of dedication. Gracious God, I dedicate my life to you as a living sacrifice and bring all my actions under the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, come and fill your temple. Amen. As we prepare to bring our prayers and petitions to the Lord, I encourage you to take this time to just slow your heart and to still your soul. Would you join me in our prayer hymn?
Almighty God, as we, we bow our heads to you this day, we think about the last several days and the storms that came through, the darkness and the rising waters. Lord, for the most part, we were safe here, but other places flooded pretty badly. Lord, we pray that you be with them and provide for them. Lord, if it's someone local and we have the ability to, to help May we reach out that hand and offer a contribution or our hands and feet to help clean up. Lord, we are grateful for all that you do in our lives, that you are with us, you walk by our side, and you bless us in so many ways. But that doesn't keep us from having storms in our lives. Lord, when we go through those times, may our souls be able to be still and not get frantic and, and, and jump about chaotically. But may we know that you, Lord, are in charge and that you walk with us and you help us to come through. Lord, there are people today who, who are going through a storm of life and they're looking to you. And I pray that you would still their soul. May they know that you are the Lord of the storm and you can calm this storm as you did when you walked this earth. Now, Lord, we just take a moment in our hearts to lift up our concerns to you in silence. we conclude our petition to you by saying the, the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. First scripture lesson, lesson from, for this morning is from Psalm chapter 30. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cry to you for help, and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought me up, from, up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life 
among those who have gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy, joy comes in the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you had established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O oh Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. And from the book of Mark, chapter 4. On that day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him him with them in the boat, just as he was. The other boats were with him. The great, a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace. Be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe, and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Matthew records another incident in a storm. After Jesus had fed the 5,000, immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But then he noticed the strong wind. He became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me! Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. If you've been watching the news or listening to the radio, sometimes even just looking out your window, you know that this past year has been a, a year of storms. There have been thunderstorms. There have been rainstorms. The rivers have risen. There have been floods. There have been tornadoes, even here in, in Pennsylvania. And, and there have been forest fires out west. There have been earthquakes. There's been all kinds of storms this year. And when I watch these, 
the, the, the reporters reporting on where these things take place and interviewing people, I find it interesting how different people respond to these storms. There are some people who become totally overwhelmed and they can't see how they're ever going to overcome this situation. It's almost like they died. But for others, it's, it's just another event in life. And, and even though they may have lost everything, it's not the end of the world. It seems to be a matter of attitude and or faith. Last month, uh, Jody and I and the family, we went up to the Great Grange Fair and Center Hall, and we, we go into the, the, the basket tents and all those kind of crafty places. And on one of the, the wooden plaques that you can buy and put on your wall was this saying written by Vivian Green. It says, life is not about waiting for the storms to pass. It's about learning to dance in the rain. How many of you have heard that before? How many of you have that plaque in your house? A couple of you. Yeah, and it's a good saying. It's about learning to dance in the rain. When I was in college, I, I became good friends with a group of guys, and, and one of them I became very good friends with. And even though we haven't really seen each other or talked much over the last 20 years, I still consider him a, a, a dear friend. And this friend has endured many storms in his life. I, I admit that some of the storms that he's been through were self-inflicted, okay? As in all of our lives, right? But he, he's made some poor decisions which resulted in some tough times for him. But what always amazed me about him was his ability not to let it get him down his ability to just dance in the rain of the storms of life. I mean, he danced whenever he lost his scholarship, his Penn State wrestling scholarship. He danced whenever he totaled his father's truck. He danced when he had to do a little community service. <laughs> I remember as seniors of our final year at Penn State in landscape architecture, our whole grade for that whole year was based on one project that we started through. So we went through two semesters, one project, and it came down to this. You either passed or failed. You either graduated or you didn't. And the week before, we had been up all, you know, way into the early hours of the morning working on these, these projects to get them done in time by the deadline. And the night before they were due, we were up all night. And at 5 a.m., some of us decided to go down to the Unimart and get some snacks and something to drink. But my friend said, no, he was going to stay where he was and finish things up. When we got back, we found him asleep on top of his drafting table. And his hands were covered in black paint. And somewhere in his sleep-deprived life, he decided there all alone to finger paint with black paint all around his final project. And when he saw that, panic set in. You know, this could have been it. But, but he gathered himself up and he went with the blows and he danced right through it. Now, did he get a great grade on that final project? No. Did he pass? Yes. And life went on. Many of my friend's storms were self-made, but some were not. My friend got married and had four beautiful little girls. And at the age of 31, his wife passed away from cancer. Now, my friend could have allowed himself to, to be consumed with this, with grief and bitterness, and it could have allowed it to destroy him. But instead, with courage and dignity, he danced. When I met my friend, he was not a Christian, and he liked to party a lot, and that was part of the reason of some of his storms in life. And my, another friend and I, we prayed for him and prayed that if God couldn't lead him to Jesus through us, that God would bring someone else into his life. And God answered our prayer, and he brought my friend's wife to him. And it was she who taught him or brought him to church and she who taught him to pray. Up until then, my friend's attitude 
helped him to dance in the rain. Just his attitude, just his sheer, you know, determination. And you know, anyone can dance. It may not be pretty, just ask my wife, but anyone can dance. And, and, and Gene, my friend, he did dance, but his wife taught him how to dance with grace through faith. When his wife was finally given a terminal diagnosis, she stood up in her church and she gave a testimony saying, testimony saying that she, didn't, she was still praying for a miracle. She didn't want to leave her husband and her four small girls. She didn't want to die. But she said, I thank God for giving me the opportunity to show others how a Christian faces death. When I heard that, I was blown away. Because she was in the storm of her life, and yet she chose to dance. And oh, she did it so gracefully. In our gospel text today, Jesus and the disciples were traveling across the Sea of Galilee, covering just 64 square miles. Galilee isn't even close to the, lar to the smallest of our great lakes, Lake Ontario. And yet the geography around the Sea of Galilee is such that the storms on that sea rival those of the biggest great lakes. Jesus and the disciples are crossing the sea at dusk, and a violent storm arises, tossing this boat all over the place. The winds are creating great waves that are coming over the sides of the boat, and they're filling it with water faster than the disciples can bail it out. And it's threatening to capsize and sink the, the boat. And you have to understand that over half of these disciples were experienced fishermen, they were used to this kind of thing, so the fact that they were terrified tells us this was a wicked storm. They're bailing and with one hand hanging on to the boat with the other and hanging on to one another, and they're soaked. Meanwhile, Jesus is in the front of the boat sleeping like a baby. The disciples ask him, Lord, don't you care that we're about to drown? And Jesus gets up, and, and I don't know about you, I'm a slow reader. And one of the reasons I'm slow is because I picture everything in my head. I see this movie playing out in my head when I read. And when I read this story, I picture the disciples in a frantic you know, mess, and they're saying, Lord, we're going to drown. And Jesus kind of sits up, and he stretches, yawns, and says, quiet, be still. And immediately, the sea is calm. Jesus said to them, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And the disciples, they're still a bit, even though the storm had stopped, they're still a bit afraid. I mean, they've seen Jesus do some pretty neat tricks. He's turned water to wine. He's, he's multiplied bread and fish. He's made lame people to walk. But this was, this was big time, baby. He just told nature to be still. And it listened to him. And they're looking at him going, who is this guy that even the wind and the storms obey him? Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Faith, that's what it comes down to, isn't it? Anyone can dance. But faith helps us to do it courageously and gracefully. And for those of us who, who, who never dance, for those of us who the glass is always half empty, the, the tank is always on E, the world is always out to get us, faith may be that one thing that gives us enough courage to just step on to the dance floor. Later, as I read, there was another time Jesus sends the disciples across the Sea of Galilee on their own. And he tells them, I'll meet up with you later. And they couldn't have never imagined where that might be. But again, it's dark. Again, it's, it, the waters are rough and the winds are blowing. And the disciples, they've been rowing since dusk across this eight-mile lake. And they're only halfway there. It's in the early hours of the morning, and it's storming. And through the darkness, they see a man coming toward them, walking on the water. 
Now, I don't know that we can really fault the disciples for thinking it's a ghost and being afraid. But Jesus calmly waves to them and he says, take courage, it's me, don't be afraid. And Peter, you gotta love this, Peter says, Lord, if it's you, if it really is you, then, then tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus says, come, come Peter, storm dance with me, dance in the rain. And Peter does. He got out of a perfectly good boat and stepped into 141 feet of dark, dark water. And for a while, man, he was doing it. He's dancing on the water. But then reality sets in. Again, my mind, I'm a child of the 70s. I grew up with Saturday morning cartoons. And when I see this, I think of a Looney Tunes cartoon with Elmer Fudd chasing Bugs Bunny. And they run right off a cliff. And as long as Elmer Fudd keeps his focus on bugs, he does it. He runs right on the air. But when he realizes that what he's doing is impossible, he falls. Peter, as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he was doing the impossible. He was walking on the water. But then he felt the waves hit his legs trying to knock him down. And he realized what he was doing was impossible. And he sank. And he calls out to Jesus, and Jesus reached out and grabbed him and said, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Now understand, it wasn't that Peter had no faith. It wasn't that he lost his faith. I mean, my goodness, by, it was faith that got him out of the boat in the first place. It was by faith that he walked on water. And in faith, he called out when he began to sink. In faith. He did what no one had ever done and ever has. So I think we need to give Peter some props here. I mean, he got out of the boat and stepped onto the dance floor. But he doubted that Jesus could, could, do the, could, could continue to do the difficult. I think he doubted that Jesus had the ability to sustain this dance that they were doing. And he sank. Now, I'd like to focus for just a little bit on a few of the many truths that are in these two storm stories. The first truth is, we all have storms in our life. Some of you are going through some right now, but we all go through these stormy periods. One of the, the very common misconceptions about Christianity is that when we become a Christian, when we put our faith in Jesus, somehow all the bad things in life are going to go away that God won't allow us to, to go through those hardships. But that's not true. Jesus even told us. He said, in this world, you will have trouble. There will be storms. And of course, there are storms that we create ourselves through our own poor decisions. Many of our ailments and health problems later in life are a result of us not taking care of ourselves when we were younger. We make poor decisions. We pick things up that we shouldn't be picking up. We pick them up wrong. We pick them up, you know, they're too heavy. We play sports and beat ourselves up because we bounce back, only to find that we didn't bounce back as far as we thought we would. And our diets, we eat things that just don't contribute to, to making us healthy. And those poor, and we could list a whole host of other things of poor decisions that put us into times of trial. But there are other storms that arise for unknown reasons, a car accident, a house fire, a flooding, a wound that won't heal, and many others. And these, these are all hard to endure, but with God's help and in faith, we can persevere. But for those of little faith, when the storms of life come, instead of drawing closer to God, they withdraw from God. They, they, hu they huddle in the bow of the boat rather than stepping out into the waves. It is true that problems and difficulties can be painful and discouraging, but I'd like to also suggest that they can also be opportunities for growth. James chapter 1 he tells us, consider it pure joy, pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds, 
because you know that in the testing of your faith, it produces perseverance. Perseverance. Take Peter, for example. How much do you think Peter grew in faith as a person, as a Christian, as a leader, after Jesus called him Satan and said, get thee behind me, and after he denied knowing Jesus three times, and after he abandoned Jesus in his time of crucifixion? Those were painful times for Peter, self-inflicted. But he didn't walk away from God in faith. Instead, he drew toward God, and he grew. After Jesus' resurrection, Peter and John spent a night fishing. And in the morning, they saw a man who was, had a fire built, cooking breakfast. And he called them to them. And John recognized who it was and said, Peter, it's the Lord. And Peter didn't even hesitate. He was right out of that boat. Now, he didn't walk on the water that time. But he, he wasn't afraid. And, and he didn't need to be called. He didn't have to wait for Jesus to say, come. He just went. And what about the other disciples? The first time that they were in a storm in a boat and they were afraid, Jesus calmed the storm and they looked at him and said, who is this guy? And the second time, though, that they were in a boat in a storm and they were afraid, Jesus calmed the storm and now they said, surely this is the Son of God. That's growth. That's growth. I mean, think of the other stories of Joseph and Gideon and Samson and David. Read their stories in Scripture and watch them grow as you turn the page. Think of Jacob. He was a liar, a deceiver. He was selfish. And, and most of Jacob's storms were self-inflicted. And, but he grew. And in Genesis 31.10, it is recorded that he got a name change because all night long he was wrestling with the angel of the Lord. And, and God gave him a name, a new name that said, called him Israel, meaning one who, who struggles with God. Now, that name refers to that wrestling match that he had all night long, but I think there's truth in looking at it as one who continues to struggle with God but in partnership with God, in side by side with God, as a team facing life struggles together, they struggle with these things. Read the Old Testament. God is continually telling his people, I will not leave you alone. Jesus told us that he would never abandon us, but that he would be with us to the end of the age and that the Holy Spirit would be with us to encourage us, to, to guide us, to, to strengthen us. In both storm stories, Jesus was there beside the disciples, but I want to look at the, the proximity that Jesus was to the disciples. The first time in the storm, Jesus was in the boat. Where was he the second time? Second storm, he was outside of the boat. You see, sometimes when we have troubles, when we go through storms, Jesus comes to us. He enters into our boat and he calms the storm. He makes it go away. But other times when we're in a storm of life, he stands outside of the boat and he calls us to come to him. He waits for us to come to him, not intending to make the storm go away, but to walk with us through that storm. Jesus says, come, come. And in both situations, there will be times when we will, we will doubt. The waves will threaten to sink the boat. They'll continue to fill the boat. We'll step out into the waves, and those waves will pound us and try to sink us. And if our faith isn't strong, we will sink, boat or no boat. However, also in both cases, when we call out, Lord, save us, Jesus does because he never leaves us. He walks through the storms of life with us. So there's a lot about our attitude and our faith and how we look at these storms. And I'd like to share with you a, a poem written by B.J. Gallagher. It's called Weather Report. 
Any day I'm vertical is a good day. That's what I always say. If you ask me, how are you? I'll answer great, because in saying so, it makes it so. When life gives me dark clouds and rain, I appreciate the moisture that brings a soft curl to my hair. When life gives me sunshine, I gratefully turn my face up to feel the warmth on my cheeks. When life brings fog, I hug my sweater around me and give thanks for the cool shroud of mystery that makes the familiar seem different and intriguing. When life brings snow, I dash outside to catch the first flake on my tongue, relishing the icy miracle that is a snowflake. Life's events and experiences are like the weather. They come and go, no matter what my preference. So what the heck? I might as well decide to enjoy them. For indeed, there is a time for every purpose under heaven, and each season brings its own unique blessings. Friends, we all have storms, and some of you are going through some major storms right now. But don't allow Satan to drag you under, to pull you into the deep waters with pessimism and negativity and discouragement and bitterness and fear. Instead, look for the positives in these things. When it snows, go out and grab some in your mouth. When it's foggy, hug the sweater and give thanks that you, you have this warmth. Look for the opportunities, opportunities to grow. In other words, Ask Jesus to teach you how to dance in the rain. Amen? Amen? Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your word today and these stories that were recorded of people in a literal storm. And yet you, you calmed them because you are the master and creator of all things. And the storm had to listen to you. Well, Lord, we go through storms ourselves, physical storms, emotional storms, health storms. But you, you can control those as well. And so we turn to you. And Lord, help us to have faith. Help our souls to be still in those storms that we don't panic, but we reach out to you calling, Lord, save us. And you will either get in the boat with us and make it go away or you will call us to step out into the waves and the wind, and you will walk with us through it. Either way, Lord, may our faith be strong, and may we, we exemplify that to the people around us, that they may see how we endure with a calm heart and knowing that, that you are in charge. So help us today to be of that kind of faith. Help us to dance in the rain. Amen. We have a great, great God, do we not? Yes. Amen. And I invite you to stand and join us as we sing our praises to the Lord of the dance.
my friends. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit go with you. Go forth in peace and dance. Dance. Amen.